Okay, so I missed a few years of the box office predictions videos, because in case you didn't notice, movie release schedules have been a bit fickle as of late, coupled with box office numbers being drastically affected by the lockdowns, and also the moves of certain films to home streaming same-day releases, so making these prediction videos is not as simple as it used to be. However, I miss doing these, and so even though there's a big chance something can go wrong with this list, like all of these movies being delayed to 2023, I still wanted to do this one. Knock on wood for that, by the way. Please don't happen. So here are the 10 films that I think will make the most money in 2022, ranked from lowest to highest. Also, just to be clear, this is worldwide, not domestic. So let's get into this. At number 10, I've got Mission Impossible 7. Mission Impossible is a franchise that's always done quite well box office wise, but in recent years, through the quality of the films and the publicity that Tom Cruise's stunt work draws to them, has become one of the biggest movie franchises today. The last film got close to $800 million, which is pretty damn impressive for something that isn't a superhero movie, a kids movie, or a Fast and Furious movie. I think this franchise has got a ton of momentum right now. I'm thinking this one cracks the top 10, even in a very stacked year. At number 9, I've gone for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which might seem strangely low considering how massive of a hit the first one was. And yes, I still think this one will do very well. The character of Black Panther, Wakanda, everything associated with this part of the MCU has become a prominent part of the mainstream pop culture. However, with the tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman, Letitia Wright problems, and basically just the general uncertainty of what is now happening with this property, I'm not super confident putting this as high up on the list until we see what direction this film is actually going to take. Will probably still do very well, being an MCU film, yeah, almost certainly. But because there's so many unknown factors around this film and we don't really know what it's gonna be, I've gone for the number 9 spot. Continuing the Marvel trend, at the number 8 spot, I've gone with Thor Love and Thunder. Thor Ragnarok was a smash hit at the box office, people really took to this new comedic style for Thor, along with the weird, goofy, fun space story, plus that Led Zeppelin trailer was incredible and got lots of attention to the film. And I think if this movie is marketed in a similar way, really highlighting the fun and the 80s synth weird goofy vibe, this one will find similar success, if not more. Plus, MCU, recognizable character, blah blah blah, all the stuff that would usually make a lot of money, and then on top of that, a style for this character that people really seem to connect with. At number 7 is one that doesn't need much explanation, Minions 2, The Rise of Gru, kids movie, extremely recognizable branding and characters, easy one for parents to take their kids to. These movies always do very well at the box office, maybe this one having young Gru in it will make it an even bigger hit, everyone's been dying to see a young Gru origin story. Look, I loved the first two movies when I saw them in the cinemas, but since then, either my interest in these films has waned as I've grown older, or they've taken a dive in quality. Or, in all likelihood, a combination of the two. But regardless of the fact that I won't be going to see this, I'm sure a lot of other people will. And that's why it's here on the list. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. Just <laughs> sounded kind of mean when I read it out loud. At number six, I've got Jurassic World Dominion. Jurassic Park is one of the biggest household names in the movie world, and its recognizability has been proven with the massive success of the reboot sequel and its follow-up. I think even though the second one wasn't particularly critically adored, that won't affect this one's box office numbers. It's one of those quintessential blockbuster franchises that everyone can go see and usually get a kick out of in some respect. And I think this one's premise of dinosaurs in the real world and how that will presumably feature heavily in the marketing will build up a lot of anticipation. Something kind of new with this franchise to get people interested. I don't think we've quite yet reached the saturation point where audiences are sick of these Jurassic movies yet, so I imagine this one will do quite nicely. Quick reminder here that if you're enjoying this video, drop a like, subscribe, hit the bell button, and comment what 10 movies you think will make the most money down below. Also, after the video, check out my podcast, The Poorly Planned Podcast. Alright, back to the video. For the number 5 spot, I've gone with Pixar's next offering, Lightyear. Not that surprising of a pick, it's an animated family film, it's Pixar, and it's building off of the most established animated film franchise in history. Kids movies can sell more tickets because the kids gotta go with their parents, the trailer created quite a bit of buzz online, pun definitely intended, some of the reaction being good, some of it being a bit weirded out, but I think the fact that this movie might be taking a bit of a different direction than some are expecting won't play a factor. I'm sure a lot of parents are just gonna think, hey, a new Toy Story movie, let's go see that. And may just be a tad confused when they go to find it's an astronaut origin story about the guy who the toy was based on. At least I think that's the story. Or even if everyone knows exactly what the premise is. Regardless, I think this will make lots of box office cash. Coming in at number four, I've gone for Avatar 2. This one was a bit tricky to place. It could have been easy to say number one, because the first movie is the biggest of all time, but then it could also be easy to put it much lower on the list, citing that the first film has been criticized since then for not being the most memorable film, and so would people really come out in droves for the sequel 11 years later? Or 12 years? 13 years. Wow, my math is way off there. <laughs> and so ultimately, I've landed somewhere in the middle. I think this will do incredibly well. 
As stated, first one was kind of a big deal, and pretty much everyone has seen it, and much like the first one, I imagine this will be a film that is marketed as you need to see it in the cinema. However, given the current movie climate, I'm not even talking pandemic, I mean just, uh, the superhero thing <laughs> that's been going on for a few years, I don't think it'll beat the three I've placed above this, and plus, there were some other factors that helped to contribute to the first one's success, such as the use of 3D that aren't as prevalent anymore. Still, I think this should do very well. Plus, the first one is quite good in my opinion, and does have a fan base, and I feel like by the time this rolls around, there'll be more hype than people are maybe expecting. At number three, I have Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. To say I was surprised that Aquaman became the highest grossing DC movie ever would be a bit of an understatement. It is kind of a funny retribution for all the years of being the biggest joke character in the superhero world. But given the film we got, it does make sense. It's a very accessible movie with crazy visuals and effects and action sequences, which also makes it the kind of thing that people want to see on the big screen. And so with this version of the character now being an established worldwide phenomenon, and with the sequel promising to deliver more of what made the first one so popular, I definitely see this being one of the biggest films of the whole year. The first one is the 10th highest grossing superhero movie ever. Just found that out. Man. Number two is The Batman. And for a while, I really considered putting this one at the number one spot. This just feels like an event film. This feels like a movie that everyone is going to go see. Doesn't matter if you care about DC movies, or superhero movies, or movies in general. It's one of those where it just gets brought up in casual conversation with anyone. Of like, oh, did you see that new Batman movie? It's generated a ton of hype online with the trailers. It's obviously one of the most iconic characters in all of fiction. It looks like it's going to be an incredible movie, which likely won't hurt. And again, this epic, big, event movie vibe around it reminds me of the Dark Knight films. Almost a more prestigious kind of blockbuster. Which sounds like such a pretentious film student thing to say, <laughs> but I hope you get what I mean. And as a result of all of that, I think it's going to make a ton of money. Pandemic allowing. Now before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions that I could see sneaking into the top 10 one way or another. Fantastic Beast 3, The Crimes of- nope, that was the last one. Um, Fantastic Beast 3, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Harry Potter's a big franchise, especially if this one is good, it could make a lot of noise. Morbius. I really, really doubt this one will make it, but given the success of Venom, who knows? Then again, I think Venom has more to it that Morbius will not. But anyway, I'll put it here just in case. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. First one didn't make crazy money, but considering how popular it was, maybe there'll be enough hype for the sequel to cross into the top 10. Mario. Big property. Animated movie. Good cast. The Flash. Well-known superhero, the Keaton Batman stuff might get more of the mainstream interest. Could do really well. Top Gun Maverick. I think this one would do really well domestically, but not sure about internationally. Also not sure how big the Top Gun hype is today. John Wick 4. Rated R. Ah, no oh wait, no, it's not even coming out next year. <laughs> wow, what a sad realization I had as I was recording this. And Black Adam. Dwayne Johnson, comic book movie. If it gets good word of mouth, maybe it could have a bit of an Aquaman effect, where it does surprisingly super well. And number one, the film that I think is going to make the most money in 2021 is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The reason I put this above the Batman is that we're coming off of the wild success of No Way Home, and I think while this already likely would have done very well, it might have a bit of an Iron Man 3 effect, where that movie coming right after the Avengers carried some of that momentum with it at the box office. Everyone saw No Way Home and saw Doctor Strange in that, so that could spike attention for this movie. Plus, the literal trailer being at the end of the movie probably didn't hurt. And even without that, it's an MCU film. The first one did quite well for an MCU solo movie at the time. This character has become very well known through his appearances in the Avengers films as well. This film promises more multiverse craziness, which could potentially include some more cameos from other Marvel properties that, after No Way Home, I'm sure people would be even more jazzed about. Even if that doesn't happen, people might be speculating that it will, which could get people into the cinema. Just all around, this has tons of money written all over it, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it break a billion dollars. So, those were the 10 movies I think will make the most money in 2022. What do you think of my list, and what does your list look like? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at bhl underscore Hudson, my TikTok at bhl Hudson, check out this podcast that I do with a friend of mine where we talk about movies, TV shows, a bunch of nonsense, it's called the Poorly Planned Podcast, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.